Hey there, welcome to No BS Tutorials. I'm Drake Hubed, and I know why you're here, so let's skip the BS. Let's make a few things clear so we can make sure you're not wasting your time. This video will detail how to set up a T-Shock Terraria server hosted off of your computer that others will be able to join via your IP address. I'm not going to make you download anything other than T-Shock itself, and I'm not going to have you go through any third-party hosting service because everything will be localized to your PC. So, that being said, the only things we are going to need to complete this tutorial are an installation of T-Shock for PC Terraria, your default gateway, your IP address, your IPv4 address, and the login information for your router. If you are on PC or the YouTube app, you can see that the timeline is segmented into key sections in case you are only looking for a certain step in this process. Timestamps of these sections are also available in the video's description. Alright, so first things first, you're going to need to download T-Shock. Clicking on the first link in the description will bring you to the T-Shock releases page on GitHub. From here, you're just going to want to locate the most recent release of T-Shock, scroll down to the bottom of the post, and click on the zip file. Obviously, this will prompt a download, so go ahead and download that to wherever you so please. Once you have the zip file downloaded, you're going to navigate to wherever you put it, right-click the file, and click Extract All. Again, extract those to wherever you want, just keep it somewhere convenient, because you're going to need to come back here later. So, easy enough, you're downloading of T-Shock is complete. Right here is the executable file that will launch your server, but of course, there are a few other things we have to set up first. Right now, running that file would put your server online, but it wouldn't do what you want. That's because as of right now, the server is only local to your PC, but obviously you want your friends to be able to join it. In order to allow other players to connect to your server, you are going to need to enable port forwarding through your router. This is where things get a little bit more technical, but trust me when I say that it's still going to be super easy to follow, and that it is the only way to host the server without some third-party BS. To begin this process, we need to get to your router's login screen, and for this, you need your default gateway. In order to find it, type cmd into the Windows search bar and open up the command prompt. In the command prompt, you're going to input the command ipconfig and then press enter. This will bring up a list of information, and towards the bottom of this list, you will see your default gateway right there. While you're here, also take note of your IPv4 address because we'll need it later. Now just go ahead and throw that default gateway into your browser's address bar. Now your screen will likely look different from mine depending on your brand of router, but we're still doing the same thing. You're going to have to log in through this page. If you don't know the username and password for your router, most people don't change them on setup, so you can search the default username and password for your model of router and try that. If this does not work, you'll probably have to go to your parents or service provider in order to get the login credentials. Again, this portion is going to look quite different based on what router you have, but what you're looking for is a page or section dealing with port forwarding. For me, I have to go to the firewall tab and click on virtual servers slash port forwarding on this sidebar. I'm going to click add, and regardless of what you're on, it should be asking for similar information here. In the description prompt, you're just going to put whatever you want this to be named in your router. For inbound port, you want to put 7777 to 7777. You want the format to be TCP, and you want the local port to be 7777 to 7777 as well. The private IP address is that IPv4 address we saw earlier, so go ahead and input that number into the field. Then you can add the virtual server, and just like that, you've set up port forwarding. There is just one last step to getting your server multiplayer ready. Right now, if you booted up the server and tried to get your friends to join, they still most likely wouldn't be let in, and that's because they would be getting blocked. Your computer will likely recognize the incoming connection requests from your friends as security threats and sever the connection. In my experience, Windows Defender will do this, but I don't know how this will interact with other antivirus software. If Windows Defender does end up blocking this connection, you can simply disable it for the duration that the server is running by typing Control Panel into the Windows search bar. From here, click System and Security, click Windows Defender Firewall, and on the sidebar, click Turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off and toggle it off. Obviously, if your system's security is important to you, toggle Windows Defender back on once you close the server. Alright, final step. In order for your friends to connect to your server, you are going to need to provide them with your public IP address. If you don't know what your public IP address is, just search up what is my IP address and it'll tell you. Now, of course, a disclaimer. Your public IP address is not something you should haphazardly throw around. If your IP address lands in the hands of someone untrustworthy, that could potentially pose major security and safety risks. So yeah, please only give your IP to people who you can trust with that info. Now you can go ahead and navigate back to where you extracted the T-Shock files, run terrariaserver.exe, select one of your worlds, set a player limit, leave that port as 7777, type Y to activate that port 
forwarding, set a server password if you want one, and just like that, your brand new multiplayer T-Shock server is now online for you and your friends to join. Just hop into Terraria, select multiplayer, select join via IP, enter that public IP address, enter the port as 7777, and you are good to go. Now that you're running your worlds off of T-Shock, you've granted yourself access to a plethora of awesome commands and game rules that will allow you to further customize your gameplay experience. If enough people seem to want it, I may release a follow-up video detailing the basics of server customization using commands and whatnot, but in the meantime, I've linked to the official T-Shock guide down in the description, which catalogs everything you'll ever need to know. In any case, that's all I've got for you here today, and I really hope I helped you out by making this video. If for whatever reason you are running into some issues in this process, always feel free to drop a comment explaining what's going on, and I'll do my best to help you work through it. If you found this video helpful, drop us a like so other users like yourself can find this video easier. Thanks for choosing NVSC. I've been Dre Cubed, and I'll see you around.